as I said to you, we'll keep it short and brief so that we can get on with the awards. But there are young journalists in the room, and today these young journalists some have 15 years of work ex. They started at 22, 23. There are some who are 32 years young, eight, 10 years. There are people from digital journalism, pure digital journalism, people who are in print and have, of course, digital. What is your advice to young journalists who are trying to make sure they do impactful journalism in the future in China? Well, the first thing they should do is to stop listening to old people like like you and me. <laughs> really, I am. Right? Um, I, I think uh, one, one of the things I've uh, often heard is um, every time I'm in a room with uh, you may find it difficult to believe, but there are actually journalists in this country who are older than me, right? Um, and uh, every time I'm in a room with such people, the talk usually veers around to uh, how great journalism is, uh, it used to be in their time, and of how my generation has ruined it, and the generation that came after it has ruined it even more. Um, one instance when this happened was not too long ago. Uh, this August institution has something called a... Uh, Saturday club, right, where they invite people to come and talk. So there was an occasion where uh, a bunch of uh, uh, journalists who used to, whom I used to read when I was in school, and all August names, I will not take any of the names. Some of them have since departed, right? So, but, um, and so we were in a room, they, they made the mistake of asking me to speak to them on the political economy, so I spoke. Um, one reason I became an editor was because I sound like a professor sometimes and I can give nyan, as they say, so uh, it it, uh, it helps. Uh, so at the end of, during the conversation, something came up and I finally had to tell these people, some of whom had written 10 books or 20 books, and that I would not hire even one of them in my organization. And, and they were aghast because these were people who had all been editors of major publications. And I told them the reason I won't hire you is because you're not productive enough. You take, you don't come the lunches and we. You just work them. for you just work for a week and turn one densely written editorial. Doesn't make sense. So I think what everyone forgets is that there is a lot of good journalism that's happening in this country right now, um, and there is this artificial distinction that is being drawn between print journalism and digital journalism. There is good journalism and bad journalism, right? But there is no other distinction because at the core, journalism remains the same. Um, unfortunately, there are a bunch of journalists uh, who've become activists and who sit in judgment of everyone else saying what you're saying is right and what you're saying is wrong. And, and there is, um, uh, suddenly it's become very, very unfashionable to tell both sides of the story because, you know, uh, people say if you tell both sides of the story, there is false equivalence, whereas, you know, I really think both sides of the story need to be told. Um, and I think all these things are inputs that young journalists need to keep in mind. Uh, they need to take pride in what they are doing. Uh, they need to be they need to take pride not just in themselves but in the profession uh, because uh, I see journalists bad-mouthing journalists all the time. And Thank you so much. Well, that is not to be done. Thank you so much, Sukhru, for saying that. Yeah. I can say with the number of journalists I know um, that is true. And when I acquired Business World, when I tried to hire editors, if I would do a rough check, I, I couldn't hire people for the first two, three years because if I called somebody, they would say, useless. I'm being, I'm being polite, right? So, he, and Rahul Shushankar also in the day said that we need to come together as uh, industry, as professionals. So thank you for pointing that out, that journalists need to applaud each other, appreciate each other, even if they're contemporaries. Yeah, and, and you may not like what the other person is doing, but at the end of the day, that person is a journalist who's trying, hopefully, to do an honest job just like you are. Uh, professional courtesy is extremely important in journalism. I remember the time when I was a really young business reporter trying to write about this business group called MRF. And Shireen will tell you, they never talk, right? I mean, they hate talking. Um, so uh, I finally found out that, uh, very young, so you can't blame me for my lack of knowledge, but I found out that the promoter was the brother of the promoter of the Malayala Manorama. 
So I called up uh, the editor in chief of the Malayalam Mahmo, who was his brother, and young reporter left a message for him saying, "I need to talk to you." So he called me back a few hours later, saying, "My brother will be most unhappy, but you're a journalist. I have to extend to you the professional courtesy of talking to you." And he gave me a lot of the information that I wanted, including the shareholding, which we published. Right. So. Uh, and that stayed with me right i mean there was no reason for this man to talk to me other than the fact that i was a journalist he was a journalist so i think there needs to be that sense of fraternity which is sadly lacking and uh, anurag tells me we are pressed for time i know we are because i was supposed to do this at 2 pm and i'm doing it at 3 so i will stop right now and we should get on my, with our yeah, and my last question you know again a lot been written about print uh, dying print organizations across the world look at new york times you look at washington post they have reinvented themselves in a digital era and their bottom lines reflect that and primarily uh, readers are paying for the product what are what are you doing as the editorial head of india's top newspaper to reinvent your organization the editorial head of uh, hindustan times is actually my boss Right, so yeah, she's the editorial director, but clear. Yeah, yeah, Miss right? Balti uh, is the editorial but, director. Uh, um, I think uh, you'll have to look at the era, right? I mean, it was easier for New York Times and Washington Post and all to do what they did at the time when they did it. Um, the challenge before any media organization, and this is in print or digital, is how do you build a subscription business at scale, and what will people pay for? uh there used to be a time when people would just pay for any sort of information or anything else but i think over the last 2 years what we are beginning to realize is that people now will pay information for will will pay for curated information for curated news because there's just so much news out there that that there, there are no filters and and there is no way for you to know what is credible what is not credible what is true what is not true and i think increasingly we are seeing this tendency of people to pay uh, for credible curated news uh, that's a plug for uh, people like me editors and for vikram's organization editor g because i think editors still have a role to play in that curation it's not something that algos can do just yet at some point in time they will be able to do it uh, and i think that is really the future for media will we be able to build a scale business out of this remains to be seen but print is not going anywhere right i mean even in the us if you look at uh, the wall street journal for instance still has a lot of print copies so i think um, in india if you were to look at english language newspapers you have at least a decade before you come to a cliff sunset right uh, Uh, where a lot of people are not used to newspapers at all sure the pandemic has hastened it a little bit simply because a lot of people stopped taking newspapers during this period and and they've never gotten back to taking newspapers but um, i i don't think newspapers are going to die tomorrow but the important thing to realize is that you know this print digital um, tv are all at the end of the day artificial distinctions um, i don't think news journalism is going to die so if you know how to be a good news journalist uh, you will have a job and and uh, that's saying a lot in these days yeah saying being a good journalist uh, suku thank you for telling us that we're in the business of brand and content you know sometimes a huge brand and as long as the content keeps pace with the audiences that are in multi platform environment i'm sure every editorial product will thrive there are startups in the business journalism space and you did work in the business journalism space uh, extensively and many years who has got 20000 10000 30000 paid subscribers so subscriber. so clearly there is some hope if you do the right content you know there is hope for long form copy too which you written about in the past i just want to let you go and uh, by asking you uh, your experience of the first edition of the exchange for media english journalism jury i was not there i was away with my daughter who was speaking at a un conference in in bombay so she told me i can't look at my phone i can't do emails i can't look at my ipad 
So I was not there, but I was told you told the team that we should do it physically and not do a virtual duty. That's the feedback that came to me. Yeah, I mean, it's just very difficult to get sense of people uh, virtually. But before I say that, I just want to react to what he said because he spoke about the business journalism space and a lot of startups that have 10,000 subscribers and all. That's not scale. It, it's not going to pay for even a fraction of my newsroom. Or your salary. And I'm speaking... Or your salary. <laughs> that, <laughs> we should not go down that road. Like, like all good Indians, I feel that I'm underpaid. <laughs> right, so we should not go down that road. But uh, the jury was fun. Uh, we had a lot of uh, uh, interesting applications. Um, very, very diverse group. I wish it could have been more diverse geographically. Uh, I don't think we had adequate representation from regional media. I don't think we had adequate representation from uh, some corners of the country. And uh, I'm sure there is good work that is being done there, especially in regional languages. And I'm sure all of you know this, uh, regional language journalists do some of the bravest journalism out there and they are at the most threat from uh, local government action, which often tends to be far harsher than anything that larger governments can do. Um, so I, I'm hoping that next year you can Thank make you, it broader. Sukha. But the process was uh, fun. Uh, I'm hoping that the shortlisting process uh, can be a little more efficient the next time, time uh, because we would uh, definitely, I, I'm speaking on behalf of other members of the jury, Vikram was there in the jury, uh, I saw Bupin around, he was on the jury. We all felt that we were being a little unfair in just giving two or three minutes to uh, everyone who came. So, you know, people would speak, um, you, you would have a bunch of questions to ask them, but you wouldn't ask them. And, and I think the least you can do is to respect people by giving them 10-15 minutes of your time. So spread it out over two days, get different people for the jury, try and keep some common people, but give make make sure that everyone is heard so that people go back thinking that it was a fair process. Thank, thank you so much. I believe in physical juries. In Inma, we do a physical jury and Ms. Shirin Ban is there. This year, we didn't make journalists or editors wait too long, more than 10-15 minutes. We yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but fact is physical juries, we budget more time. We try to do more virtually. And this is a jury that again, I put together, I called Miss Ban. She couldn't be there on the jury on, but I chased her. We didn't announce the jury till she agreed because I really wanted India's best journalist editors on the jury. So thank you to all the jury members. Thank you to Suku. It is the first edition. Like most of our initiatives uh, have grown, this will become the marquee list. So thank you for making time for us, Suku going th through this process and I've discovered 18, 20 names that I didn't know of and I pride on knowing every journalist uh, as my job. So clearly next year, the Indian language journalists and you know, more geographical spread, physical jury meet, more time for journalists. But once the first list is out, I also pleasantly surprised to know some people I know. I always thought they were about 40 there, uh, under 40. I won't give their names away. <laughs> But I'm, I swear that's a reality. I mean, I'm not, not trying to look at the people. I once, <laughs> I once had an editor who stopped aging at 39. Okay. I mean, By the way, you know, know, editors are notorious, including me, for putting their old photos in the op-eds, you know. Yeah. I'm sure you know that. Where they look. I'm not referring to you, Suku. Yeah. So thank you. And, you know, I don't want to patronize Suku, but Suku is always kind to me with his time, with his patronage. Always trusts me. And most importantly, makes time over the last 20 years. He's been very kind to me. So I want to extend a round of uh, gratitude to Suku for making time. I think time is our biggest asset. So thank you, Vikram, Bupen, uh, everybody who made time for the jury. This is the inaugural list. And we are doing this as an adjunct event to INBA, which is our Exchange for Media News Broadcast Award. The 14th edition is on Saturday at the Imperial Lawns. During the day, we have News Next. Uh, which is at the Imperial uh, Ballroom. The the Vice Chairman of the Rajya Sabha, who is the Jury Chair, is presiding over the function, Shri Harivansh Narayan Singh Ji. Uh, the IMB Minister is the Chief Guest. Uh, so all the jury members, all the winners, we have not announced the winners yet. We will do it as close to the awards as possible, maybe tomorrow, sometime during the day, for various reasons. At least I can have peace for a little more days. and. Uh, I just want to say, and all the journalists, editors I have are here in this room. Tomorrow morning, we announce the rankings. Tomorrow at 4 p.m. here in this room, we announce the ranking of the political spokespersons. 
So it may have some content value for you to cover. And uh, the Exchange for Media Insights team led by Mr. Sunil Kumar has done it. It's a very extensive ranking. We've looked at credibility, content, number of appearances. We've done stress testing with editors. And I talked to five editors personally. So I, if I went by their choice, I would have to do five different lists. But we have one list. I called one of the spokespersons who was in the top five and I asked him what you should be on the list before I told him. Uh, and he said, I should be number one. He is in the top five. And I thought his ranking was very good. That's why I could gather he's a rising politician. So I took the you know, courage of telling him exactly what his ranking is. He was not happy with it. But I think we've done it very scientifically, Sunil and his team. We've done, and we've done enough stress testing like for the last two and a half months. So we are doing these initiatives as an adjunct to the Exchange for Media News Broadcasting Awards, which is on Saturday. Uh, some of you are winning today, are also winning there. I will not give you names. You, your organizations will tell you. And tomorrow in the evening, we have the Samachar for Media.com, uh, Hindi Patrakarita 40 under 40. And uh, the deputy CM of UP Shri Brijesh Patakji is the chief guest, which is in the multi-purpose hall at 6.30. And we were doing the media debate, which we moved to June, because we believe that the awards will overshadow the media debate. We are getting four of the finest uh, people on each spectrum to debate, will the credibility of media come back soon? That's the motion in the house. And uh, we are also doing in July a debate um, amongst four editors and four top politicians Again, on media, our local standard is media. We, we cannot talk about the weather. Uh, we will talk about. So this is for next year. We'll do it every uh, for a week as a run up to the in INBA, which is the number one award for the journalists for the news media fraternity. So I just wanted to. I had your attention here. So tomorrow, if you, Miss Ban, Mr. Sukumar Ranganathan, if you have. Uh, uh, in trust, you may want to send your journalist to cover the rankings of the spokesperson. They are fun. So I just want to plug that uh, uh, back to Ravin so that we can get on with the awards. Please give Soko and all the jury members a big round of applause. Thank you.